In our next uh, session, it's a three-hour session. Start with the uh, how to start a CA practice. How to start a CA practice to share knowledge in this. We have an eminent uh, chartered accountant, CA Madhur Harlalka. CA Madhur Harlalka is with us. He will share his experience how he started the practice and developed to the greater heights. Now I request uh, brand chairman to escort him on to desk and also welcome him with the floor book. Friends, please welcome Mother Hanaka. Thank you, Chairman. Friends, it is uh, my privilege to introduce Madhu Harlaka to this August gathering. See, Madhu has over 17 years of experience in uh, indirect tax practice, auditing and accounting matters too. He qualified in the year 2002. He specialized in indirect tax such as GST, service tax, VAT, entry tax, customs, central excise and foreign trade policy. He has been rendering indirect tax advisory, compliance and litigation services for Indian and global clients. Mudu is actively involved with Indian trade and professional bodies for undertaking GST policy initiatives with the Indian government. He is also an author for well-known professional journals and publications on indirect taxes. Prior to joining Walker Chaniyot and Co, he was one of the founding partners of Rishi Madhur and Co, Chartered Accountants Bangalore, based firm, providing services in the case of corporate accounting, tax and auditing. A fascinating individual, CA Madhur Harlalka. I present him before you. Please join me to welcome him once again. To everyone, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, it's great to be at the Institute always. Thank you very much, the Institute, Bangalore branch. Uh, and before I start my session, uh, wish all of you and your families a very, very happy Independence Day. I also congratulate uh, today's winners of the sport, various sports programs, uh, all the individuals and the organizations uh, who took part. So, I've been uh, fortunate to be a part of this institute uh, almost last now more than 20 years. Uh, first as a student and then as a member of the institute. In fact, I remember, uh, I was just telling our chairman that uh, 15th August 2000, when I was studying for my CA final exams and I was attending the institute training classes for CA final, we had the plan hoisting on the test. So that is exactly 19 years back. And uh, been involved in various uh, capacities at the institute, I've been fortunate. Uh, today, whatever we are, it is because of the institute, it is a temple of learning. I've had the fortune of interacting all India at the central council level uh, and things like that. So, and uh, chairman called me up about a month back and, you know, uh, I thought he'd call me for some GST seminar of this time because my specialization is in direct tax. And uh, he told me you have to speak on how to start a CA farm. So that was a very, very good pleasant change and I said, yeah, uh, there was a bit reluctant. I said, sir, GST audits is there and 15th August is there. He said, no, you have to come. So I said, okay, since you're insisting. And uh, it's a very good topic. In fact, uh, you know, uh, the times in which we are living in, uh, you know, the, from 2000 when I was a student, uh, you know, and I qualified in about 2001-2002. So 17 years, it has been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Even prior to that, um, as a student, I've been in the institute. In fact, earlier the Bangalore branch was in JC Road. I've been there along with my brother to collect the study materials. And I think in 93 or 94, this particular uh, facility has been uh, started, if I'm not wrong. So, so my relation with the institute goes back a long way. Uh, you know, it has played an integral part of my life, personally and professionally. You know, it is almost like my second home, you can say. And so many things we've done here together, programs, seminars, uh, written books, uh, and things like that. Uh, right from the chairman, successive teams, and the management committee, till the management committee of the date. Uh, they all helped me and been very, very supportive in being today where I am today. I am very, very honest. When I started as a chartered accountant, uh, I was just freshly qualified in July 2002 and in January 2003 I started practicing along with my brother, uh, you know, his name is Rishi. 
So that time I got amazing support from the institute. Uh, you know, they used to call me. I, I mean, I was very very surprised. Uh, you know, that time uh, 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 so many members were there, branch uh, heads were there. Uh, that time K Ravu was there. I used to just get out of the blue calls from the institute to come and speak. Uh, and I didn't know what I did to get a call and you know I, I, I started my career with that only apart from my practice you know they used to come and encourage me to come and talk which was very nice of the institute you know when I look back and uh, in 2004-2005 I think we started our monthly newsletter uh, you know till that time the, uh, there was not much focus and emphasis on that but let me tell you these are the small things which we take it for granted today that monthly newsletter let me tell you for our Bangalore fraternity right up to the CFO level in all the biggest companies in Bangalore right to the finance manager to the practicing chartered accountants and the CA students it has that kind of wide reach and circulation in my 20 year association with the Bangalore branch uh, you know when this uh, newsletter started I started contributing monthly articles and I am very proud to say that the institute gave me the support me and with my other, another colleague Badrinath we contributed every month case laws on indirect taxes for 10 years in a row for 10 years in a row. And that is the kind of support I got from Bangalore branch and the kind of recognition I got within the society, within the within the profession, within the within the fraternity, in the industry. There were people who used to just call me up and say, if you read your article, it is very good and it is very, very knowledgeable and things like that. So you know that newsletter which uh, the Bangalore's and why I'm talking about this newsletter, I will talk to it later because it has played a great part in my practice. And for all aspirants here, the students and the freshly qualified chartered accountants here, the institute will definitely play, play a very, very big role. And I am not the only one along with me in early 2000. There were a lot of chartered accountants who were in my range, uh, my age range. Uh, they also started, uh, some were bigger than me, some were equal to me, some were maybe smaller than our form uh, and things like that. And today the newsletter, what you see and the quality of programs we are hosting, the technology, I mean, every seminar is hosted, uh, you know, it is, it is also recorded on the web. Today, if for whatever traffic reasons you are not able to make it to the Bangalore branch, the technology helps you to go and see back that particular uh, you know study circle, be it on companies act, be it on income tax or be it on GST or uh, IFRS. Uh, but those days, those facilities were not there. But it started in a small way in 2004 with this Bangalore branch newsletter. Let me tell you that was a very very path breaking thing, uh, you know. And today, if you read that quality of newsletter over a period of time, it has become a very very knowledgeable document, very very knowledgeable document on certain key areas of professional interest. And you also come to know what are the various programs uh, on a day to day, on a weekly basis, and uh, you know uh, the institute hosts the the annual seminars, the big seminars, you know the national conferences and all. So I've seen it all here. Uh, you know I've been very fortunate to take part in those conferences. Uh, sometimes even when I never used to be invited as a speaker, I used to come back sit in the audience and listen to the other people and I have gained so much of knowledge in the profession about my own subject indirect taxes. I mean it has been unbelievable let me tell you that. And I have not had any prior work experience before I started my own practice which I feel is a must. But because uh, institute has played a major part in my life I am here today and I have absolutely no common admitting uh, you know. So thank you very very much Bangalore branch of ICAI uh, you know. So now coming back to the main topic, uh, first of all I congratulate each and every of them and welcome them to the profession who have just cleared their chartered accountancy exams uh, in this results announced and I also wish those students who are in the process of writing final exam or who unfortunately could not clear, uh, let me tell you as our chief guest yes, Madhav Murthy said, it, it may be difficult uh, you know or it is not that uh, you know difficult but it is not impossible. You just need to have one thing, you need to have passion, I am telling you one thing you need to have the fire in the belly to clear your chartered accountancy exams. Okay. Because our exams are not like a week of MCOM, what K.S. Madhava Murthy said. It is something if you feel your capacity is 100%, you have to give 200%. Till you don't give double of what you have inside, you will not clear these exams. It is very easy to blame the institute, the past percentage results, 2%, 3%, 5%, 10%. It varies. During our time, I think it was 5 or 7%. Now, I think progressively the institute has doubled almost the passing percentage. Right? So we have to rise to the institute level, institute cannot come down to our level because what segregates a chartered accountant from the rest of the commerce professionals, it is these exams, let me tell you that, right. So I really, and I am telling this from my own personal experience, uh, you know it is, uh, it is tough to clear the exams but it is not impossible, it is just you have to make up your mind. First you just train your mind, the body will automatically get down to studying and clearing these exams. 
Now, having cleared these exams, obviously we have a lot of aspirations in our society. Let me tell you one more thing. We are also to be lucky in that part of the century where India is economically on the rise. Today morning I was seeing our Prime Minister's speech. He is speaking of a high trade economy. And let me tell you, no better profession than chartered accountancy profession. Because in 2028, we are projected to be the third largest economy in the world after US and China. Today, our economy is about 2 or 3 trillion. China is about 10 to 12 trillion. US is about 18 to 20 trillion US dollars. And just imagine India will be number 3, unless something very, very dramatically opposite happens. So this is the potential in our economy. <coughs> now it is all up to us to encash this particular potential in the next 10 to 20 years. As I said, probably our forefathers, our earlier two, three generations, even though they may have studied hard, but yeah, that kind of economic boom, we have not seen it earlier. So I'm telling you, first of all, we are extremely lucky and thank to God that we are in this point in time in our careers where India is on the path to economic glory. There is, no, there, there is very little doubt about that. Of course, in between there may be these temporary slowdown, economic slowdown, what people are talking about is that, that happens, that is due to a lot of uh, factors which is beyond our control, it is due to uh, certain global factors, it is due to certain local factors also uh, and things like that, but that is all part and parcel of commerce, right? But if you look at the long term India story, definitely it is very very encouraging and we have a, we have a big role to play. Now once you qualify, right? We have all aspirations. Some of us have our own family business. Like in my friend circle, they qualified, they never wanted to get into practice, they never wanted to join a job. They got into their own business, their family business. Good enough. If you are not, uh, or even if you have a family business, you may want to take a work experience outside the family business. Just go out two years and work, either in practice or in industry or, or elsewhere. Right? So really we have, uh, you know, today so many options are there compared to maybe 70s, 80s where that many industries were not there, you know, because our economy was a closed economy and chartered accountants, although very highly respected, there was a vast difference in the remuneration what you earn today as a freshly qualified in an industry or in a company or in a mid-sized private limited company, uh, maybe compared to when you were a freshly qualified chartered accountant, let's say in 1985. I have friends who qualified in 1987 or 88. That time the starting salary of a chartered accountant was 2500 rupees a month. I am not trying to be little. I am just telling you in 30 years from 1987 to 2019, you see how the profession has moved. The profession has moved because of the economy. In industry, that time the options were limited. Today we have a lot of options in the industry. Today we have a lot of options in the industry. Now when I am asked to speak about how to start a CA firm, first of all, you have to make a choice once you qualify. It is practice versus job. I'm assuming you don't want to get into your family business. Okay. <coughs> you have really two, three options. Or two options practice versus industry. Okay. Now, or industry, or maybe consulting firm like the large four, large five, six, seven, eight firm, top ten, you know, very large accounting firms, the multinational accounting firms, or the, uh, uh, the Indian based or uh, large firms. So, to that extent, you have to be very, very clear as to you want to start your own practice the day you qualify. Like A.S. Madhavamurthy said, the day you qualify, you are, and you obtain a certificate of practice from the institute, you can sign any balance sheet. Whether you are freshly qualified or not, technically on paper, you can sign the Infosys and Vipro balance sheet. Our profession is so great, it does not make any distinction between a freshly qualified and a 30-year-old qualified chartered accountant. Right? But the practical life, the practical business scenario is not like that, obviously, when you, the moment you qualify. In fact, uh, when I used to do my article shape and study for my final, my seniors used to tell me, your actual learning will start the moment you qualify. Let me tell you, the moment you qualify, the people start looking at you differently. You start looking at the life and the profession very, very differently compared to how you look at it as a student. As a student, you just want to clear your exams. You don't want to bother what is going to happen later. Because you work so hard in the office, right? Ours is the only profession where articleship is like a full-time job. It's like a full-time employment, 10 to 6. And then we have our exams, we have our coaching classes. It is not easy. It is the only profession in India or perhaps the world. Our Indian CA curriculum is unparalleled on Earth planet. Let me tell you that. It is a double-decker course. It is a full-time job. Plus the curriculum is extremely, extremely vast. Right? So as a CA student, by the time you are coming in the third year article, the CA final is and should be only your goal. Of course, apart from whatever work exposure you get. You know, see that is very, very important. So when you qualify, so as a student, your only goal is to clear the CA exam. I've seen a lot of students who, uh, when I was doing my final, a lot of my far off friends, they started their practice, uh, you know, on the sidelines, awaiting for the CA final results. 
don't get into that trap. I am not undermining anybody's capability or business uh, potential, but I think as a CA student, you should have a single-minded focus just to clear your CA exams. Let me tell you that. Please don't start any side business or start any side practice till you don't qualify. Of course, maybe to kill time, maybe you may want to join your father's practice. There are a lot of students who, their own fathers are practicing advocate, practicing company secretaries, cost accountants, or practicing chartered accountants. Yes, it is good to be busy in their offices, but don't start your own venture till you don't become a chartered accountant. I have seen a couple of cases in my close friend circle way back in 19 and 2000. I am not undermining that. But, you know, I don't think so. It was a very great move. What happens is that you tend to lose focus. You know, if, you're, if you start your own accounting or practicing, oh, I will clear final exams. No, you wait for the day till results come out. You know, so that is what my approach is. Maybe other people have different ways to look at it. You know, now once you clear, you make a clear, once you become a chartered accountant, uh, my only suggestion be looking. So the moment we qualify, we have really two choices as I said, practice or job, in job we have industry or the, you know, the accounting firms. Now it always helps that you know, once, you, once you have gained certain amount of uh, you know, experience, right, only then you should jump into practice. I, I, not that I regret because I was, you know, I partnered with one more individual that collectively we had good experience. So let's say tomorrow you want to evaluate a decision the moment you start practice. I think first of all you have to clearly, you have to plan your career very very smartly nowadays. Uh, okay, maybe probably compared to maybe 20-30 years back, right? Okay, so you first of all have to decide which line you want to choose. Okay, accounting, auditing, taxation, consulting. The traditional areas of practice we are all knowing, it has been audit, bank audits, tax audit, individual tax returns and, and things like that, right? That has been our profession last about 60-70 years. What are the upcoming areas? Okay, there is IFRS. There is DTC which will come, GST has been introduced two years back, customs is there, these are the upcoming areas in the profession. Consulting is there, uh, IT audit is there, risk advisory is there, internal audit is there, internal audit is there earlier also. So first of all, I think when you qualify, you should make a clear choice. And let me tell you, this choice also, you keep re people tend to revisit how I look at my career when I got qualified in 2001-2002, compared to how I looked at my career after 10 years and how I look at it after 19 years today. It's totally, totally different. But at the same time, I think we live in an era of specialization. We all should choose our specialized activity. Whether today you want to be in the audit line, internal audit or statutory audit, you want to be into direct taxation, you want to be into indirect taxation. I think consult some senior chartered accountants in the city, talk to them, talk to a few family members. I think you should pick up your core area of specialization. Fortunately for me, by the time I became a chartered accountant, I was very clear, I wanted to do indirect taxes. In fact, I was already working as a paid assistant in one of the very uh, well most, uh, uh, one of the most well-known firms in Bangalore for indirect taxes. Otherwise, till my CA inter, I was very fond of income tax. But when I started studying for my CA final, uh, I started studying Central Excise and Customs. I really fell in love with that subject and I said, if I clear and if I want to practice or be in the profession, I want to make my career in this line. By God's grace, the interest what I had in May 2002 for indirect taxes, that still remains the same even as of today morning when I got up. I checked a few indirect tax notifications and case laws. So you have to have one single-minded focus. Gone are the days, in my view, of being a generalist. You cannot be a generalist to your client because client will come to you for a very, very specialized and a customized advice. Right? And today is the era of specialization. Because clients are very, very demanding today. And clients, the only reason they will come to you for the quality of your advice your name, the brand name of the firm, it is all important in pulling the client once. But when he gets comfortable is who he works with as an individual, either as a manager of the firm or as a partner of a firm. And what is only your technical knowledge and your handling and your client handling uh, skills which will keep you sustaining in the profession. And obviously how you handle your team, I'll come to that later. So first of all, as I again I repeat, when you qualify, please, please, when you are, you know, kind of uh, you know, so selecting between practice and job, please see which is the core area of your specialization. And I can't blame, you know, uh, see, everything you cannot decide. Uh, you, you take cricket world, you take politics world, you take Bollywood world. There are people who started as actors later, they become very good film directors. It happens with a lot of people. Maybe first, if you are not uh, decided, you first work two years, maybe, I don't know, as a finance manager or, or, or as a journalist, and then maybe you can take a call. It's not that all the calls of the career need to be taken in the 
first day itself. It really depends on individual to individual. Right? So, one is the area in which you want to specialize. Now, how do you start practice? It is, it is, it is very difficult. It requires proper planning. Uh, as I said, 30 years back, people used to start practicing because there were limited options in industry. I am not trying to undermine anybody. That was the state of our economy. There were not too many MNC companies. There were all large Indian corporates like Tata's, Bilda's, Bajaj, Glanch and all were there. They paid reasonably well as per those market standards. So it was equally remunerative in industry, it was equally remunerative to start practice. But today I think the trend in the last 20 years, especially after 1991, after economic liberalization, the amount of opportunities the chartered accountant has in industry outside practice is tremendous. In fact, today if you take a list of all the members all India, it is 50-50. 50% 50 50 are in practice, 50% are in uh, uh, jobs. But if you look at the newly qualified chartered accountants last 20-25 years, I think more than 70 or 80 percent have gone into jobs where if you have come into practice. And I am not trying to criticize or praise anybody, I am just putting a statement of fact before you, how much I have seen in the market last 20 years. So our generation last 20 years, they more get into the jobs rather than getting into practice. Then you will ask me boss, why am I here? Why are you here? Why am I listening to you? Why are you spending your time? Good question. The thing is, if you want to do something on your own, okay, our profession gives you that chance. Maybe other professions don't really give you that chance. Maybe, I don't know, MBA or an engineer, you may or may not be able to start your own business. But yeah, as a lawyer, as a chart, especially as a chartered accountant, it gives you a chance to do that entrepreneurial uh, thing, you know, in you. So I think you decide what is your core area of specialization, get into that. Uh, work in a CA firm, work in an industry, gather, gather that, uh, you know, uh, that expertise and knowledge, you see, that, I think that is very, very important. And I don't think so, that should be enough for two, three years, I think you should work outside at least for four to five years. I am telling you, I have seen the people in my team, they are all very good in their work with that, but the market, the clients will start taking you seriously only once you, let's say, CA plus four or five years, you start becoming a manager in any company or in a, let's say, a big four or a big five firm. Okay, now when you become a manager, that's a very responsible job, you're handling clients, you're handling your team, you're handling the partner. So that is when I think you really start slowly, slowly maturing as a professional. The first three, four years still after you become a professional, you're still in the very, very learning phase. Okay, so it is very, very important according to me, rather than immediately qualifying and starting a practice, you first gain experience. Again, see, maybe different people have different thought. This is clearly my view based on what my experience is, what I've seen out in the market. And this is totally different from what the scenario was in late 80s or early 90s. Today we have really moved on a lot. Today, what was relevant 20 years back may not be relevant today. Let me tell you that. Okay, so it is very, very important to be futuristic. Uh, you know, it is good to say, yeah, I started my own firm, this, that, and all. Today, do you have the context? Do you have the capital to start? Today, it is not easy to start a CA office. You may get a small room, but do you want to do that? I think you should have very good infrastructure as a CA in the office. <coughs> Maybe compared to earlier times, because today, see, when you are starting your own office, you cannot do everything on your own. You will need team, and team will join you if your office is located centrally and you have good infrastructure. I will share something from my own experience. We spend lakhs of rupees on our interior in our office just for two things: for our clients and for our people. When our students, even article students, apart from qualified, when they used to come to the interview, by looking at the office, they will form a certain opinion and perception about the practice. Initial, I am not saying the entire thing. So I think having a good office is extremely, extremely important. Now you may make it 7 star, 5 star, 3 star, 2 star depending on what is the nature and size of your practice. Another important thing is you have to close, you have to see whether you want to start alone or you want to have one more partner. Statistics of our Indian CA profession, the practicing people are 90, almost 80, 90 percent of practicing CAs in India are proprietors. Very few partnerships are there. When I say partnerships means two or more. Mr. K.S. Nagamurthy said he has grown the firm from two partners to eight partners. Let me tell you the firms with eight or ten partners, you can just count them on the fingers. There will not be more than 20 or 30 or 40 CA firms in India who will be having more than 10 to 15 partners. And see, little bit because of the liberalization of the economy, the competition has also increased, right? From other CA firms, from uh, CA firms coming from outside India, chartered accountants having much more, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities even in the, uh, you know, uh, in the industry. So, you say, okay, why should I go and, you know, practice, it will take time, 10 years to build up and all. I'd rather be, go on and see, earn my job, all good money. By the time I'm 30, by the time I'm 30, I'll have a car and a house. Fine, fair. I mean, that's, that's totally your call. That's totally your call. 
But I think in your life once at least you should try, at least once, to do something on your own. In fact, when we started, first two, three years we got offers from some other large firms that okay, you come and watch it was. We said, no, we have started. Thank you. But we want to start our own. We want to make this journey on our own and then we will see. You know, so it was too early for us to you know kind of think of a merger, this, that, and all. But eventually we did after maybe 13 and a half or 14 years of our practice. But initially we did get offers in the first two years of our a practice itself from a from a large MNC firm, you know. So again, coming back, uh, you have to make clearly, uh, you know, these these are the choices. Let me tell you, there are people who have not had the, they have not had this uh, this mindset, or they don't have this knowledge or this mindset to make these decisions, or some things exist like this also. Okay. So here, at least from our experience, from my experience, I'm very happy to share here with the with the crowd here. That these are some of the things you have to plan. Earlier people, including me, I didn't really plan everything. Uh, yeah, I was very passionate about my subject. I wanted to be in my own consulting practice. But whether as a freshly qualified or after five years of work experience, that probably, you know, you may have a view. So I, when I look back, you know, I partnered with another individual. Fine, it worked out for me, God's grace. But it may not work out for somebody else. So to make sure your venture succeeds, I think you work for at least a couple of years. At least four or five years you work then only start your practice. Then when you want to start your practice, you have to decide whether you want to start alone or with somebody. Now let me tell you this, it is, you know, it is a very evolving phase. How we think when we are 30, today when we are 40, 45, it is totally different. When we are 30, we are very energetic, we are very young. We want to, we are vulnerable also. We want to partner with people just to, for growth. But let me tell you, just for growing, don't partner with the wrong kind of people. Again, I am not saying you look at people with suspicious eyes. You have to be very, very shrewd in with whom you do partnership in the CA firm. Because see, uh, in India, not only CA firms, most of the partnership businesses also, a lot of them, uh, beyond a point of time, it becomes you versus me, you know, you, you tend to become like, you know, kind of selfish. So you have to be very, very careful in, sometimes the best of friends they start the CA practice, after two years they separate ways, amicably or otherwise. So I am telling you this partnership with somebody else is not very very easy including with your own brother, I am telling you. I am telling you, it is a fact of life. Because the moment commerce comes, the relationships takes a backseat. It takes a high level of maturity and a mutual give and take to stay together. It is just like marriage, I am telling you. It is not easy to partner, forget five partners, it is not easy for two partners in the same office to work for 20 years. You require a very very high level of maturity. So first of all, if you want to start your CA firm <coughs> after 5 years, you have to evaluate whether you want to start alone, build up your team and then see, fine. It is always helpful you have one more person with you. If not, I am not saying if you start as a proprietor it is wrong or something. You can do that. And then along the way when you find good people, either of your same age or if you have a manager in your office, you want to entangle him, entangle him long term, you make him, you know, give him partnership in a small way, even that is good enough. But I think at least if two partners start, you know, the journey becomes much more, that much more promising. The chances of growth are very high, you know, if, if two people start to practice rather than only one. There are people who have practiced as a proprietor, two people. All these MNC firms, Big 4, Big 5, Big 10, you think they were wrong? Big 4, no. They were not practicing in their countries. They were two, then two, two, two and two came together, four. Four joined another four. Eight joined another ten. Ten joined another twenty. That is how it is. Beyond the point, then you start, they started acquiring firms. So there are no set rules. And a lot of it is on luck also, let me tell you. You are at that point in time where our generation is very, very ambitious because of the economic scenario in our country. We want to start practice, apart from me and my brother, with two other individuals. They are very good friends of mine. No offenses meant. The day we were going to pay the office rent, that morning both of them backed out. This has been my experience. Otherwise, you have to start with four people. It is not nice of me to name those individuals. I maybe there was a momentary irritation, but obviously we became best of we continue to be best of friends. These are some of the experiences I'm sharing. Then we practiced, we had one more partner. We did very well for five, five and a half years, three partners, myself, my brother, and third partner. And then we had a partner separation for whatever reason. But at least we had a very good journey at one point in time we were three partners, about 30-35 people, backward based form. By God's grace we were doing very very well. So each person has its own journey, there are no set templates, whether you start with five people, you start with one people. But yeah, you have to define the broad contours of practice. 
if you want to start practice. Now whether you want to start practice or not, I have given you a brief chat about it. I have not uh, spent much time on that. After having decided to practice, I suggest you work. Select one area of practice. You want to be the, known the best auditor in the country, go join a CA firm which gives you good statutory audit exposure. Every minute, every moment of your life you should spend which makes you a step closer to your long term goals. Let me tell you that. There are friends with me who started practice. They wound up the practice in a, in a year or two. I don't disrespect anybody. See, even if, even if things don't work out for you now, we as a society, we should not look down upon people. I think failure is as important as success. Those people who have wound up their practices who started with me, okay, they are very well placed in industry today, perhaps better than me also. So again, there is no one, uh, you know, right or wrong. Probably their circumstances were such that it made sense for them to wind up. There were people who were my friends. When I launched my firm with uh, the firm where I am currently, they were all along working. When I moved out of my, when I, uh, you know, launched my practice, they came out of MNC firms and started their own practice. Today they are doing very well. So there are my friends. I am telling you, my own friends I have seen. My own, if I talk about 10 people, I can speak full day about how to, uh, you know, start and grow the practice. There were people with me who started with me, they wound up. I kept continuing. When I came out of my own practice or launched my own practice, around that time there were people who came out of the big four, started their own practice. So, there, again, there is no one set way. Today also you see a lot of success stories. There are senior partners who have started trial practice after being in the big four for 20, 20 years. You know? But today the level at which they have started is altogether at a different level. They have gone through that 20 years of grinding in a job. I am not saying job is bad or something, it has its own pros and cons. Let me tell you today everything is relative. You know, compared to other option, what is good or bad for you, you have to decide. If you are the type who can operate in a job, you have to see, it is not easy. Even in job, you know the dynamics. Okay, but you have to be very, very realistic about things. You cannot be emotional and start practice, let me tell you that. No. Be realistic, you want to do job, do the job for 5-7 years. When you are young, you can still take a lot of tension and pressure. Probably not after 40, 45. Okay. Do the job. What is there? Nowadays, compared to how the job scenario was for a chartered accountant who is working in a job, there is a sea change, you know. You are treated very, very well. Of course, there are work pressures. There are uh, pressures of any organization, uh, you know, plus and minus. But you have to learn to deal with it. You will come out only stronger as a professional and then you will be in a better position, I think, to start your own CA firm. Because you have seen those things. But there are people, maybe they work for a year or two, they say, no, I am not the mindset of job or working on the somebody who take orders. And I respect you. Then if you want, you start your own firm immediately or after two years, if you feel you are not the job type, that's your decision. That's totally your decision. There is nothing wrong or right. It is your own individual decision. But then the path will be that much longer to grow. Because when you are CM plus 2, I am not undermining anybody. See, I am telling you for me, a freshly qualified, I value him or her as much as probably a chartered accountant who is 20 years old. Okay, in terms of caliber, in terms of capability. But you have to ask the question, can you get business in your name? CA plus 2 years, 3 years, 4 years. It is a very very hard question to ask yourself and answer that. Because only you can answer nobody else. I am telling you these are some of the facts and it is good to dream but please dream with your eyes open. Extremely, extremely important. As an entrepreneur, you should know when to start. As an entrepreneur, you should know when to exit also. Right? Now, which are the other upcoming areas? Tax technologies, the risk advisory, m and management consulting, CISA, apart from the taxation and, and things like that, BPO option. BPO is there, offshoring is there. Now, when you start your practice, let's say now or after five years, and with the right set of people, see, don't don't think that I will set up and all over India I will have my office, I will have 50 people. Growth ke chakkar mein, don't end up partnering. The barrier of growth is not easy to carry, let me tell you that. I am telling you, I was very very enthusiastic first 5 years of my practice. But my mindset changed, luckily it changed at the wrong I We did a lot of wrong things, you know. But luckily we learned and quickly adapted and picked up, again adapted and got up on our feet and again ran. So, in the car or in the ambition of growth, you have to take your steps very very shrewdly. Don't just partner with the wrong kind of either people or employees or clients. And you have to be very very careful of the work what you want to take. 
I feel now the client, now I feel the traditional areas of practice have got very limited scope. You should, when we started the, uh, our practice, we were very clear, we will not approach any family or friends. The community from where I came from is very well known for business. Till date, I have not gone asked anybody from my community give me business. What happened is silently I worked. I worked only for corporates right from day one. Corporates and MNCs, Indian corporates and overseas MNCs. Mid-sized corporate was my target segment. So you have to determine your target market. Let me tell you, even if you start your practice after 10 years, you will not get listed companies audit or tax advice easily. Okay. So you have to be very, very clear what is the target market. That is the next step. So next step is practice. When you want to start, what is the area you want to start with, with whom you want to partner. Fine. Having decided whether you want to do it alone or with somebody, what is your target? Do you want to do the traditional areas of practice which are not that remunerative? I mean very, very practical. I don't mean to, standing on the institute platform, don't mean to undermine any predecessor of mine or any future CA. I am telling from my own experience, how I said, I never targeted any non-corporates. Let me tell you, yeah, smallest of the private limited companies, I may have done accounting, auditing, taxation. So I did my tax as a specialization. Indirect tax in 2002, there was nobody in India, and South India especially, who even touched indirect taxes. Let me tell you that. Today because of GST, last three years, even my daughters, I don't know what is GST now. Okay. But in 2002, indirect tax was a virgin area of practice. Very few people, you can count them, who did it good quality advisory and litigation work in indirect taxes. That is where I saw an opportunity. I said, boss, first of all, I have interest in this and very few people are there in this line. So if you are an early starter in a line, you already have that early starter advantage, like Flipkart had. So you have to think like a starter. Fortunately, I can very proudly say we were the accounting startup of that time. Today we have a startup strong culture in Bangalore. We were one of the first few accounting startup of that time, early 2000. You have to identify your line. Just invest in one expertise. Don't be a generalist. Yeah, when I started my own practice, I used to do accounting. Like all advocates or chartered accountants whom I know, they are much senior to me. They have all started their career with book writing and I am no different. I have gone and opened my own bank account. I have opened my own office, cleaned my own uh, you know, desks, my staff's desk, if the PUN has not come. I have absolutely, the first check I have gone and deposited, the first fees, opening of a bank account, check depositing in the bank. Those were my founding years. I mean, I still recall that with a lot of pride. Right? So don't be afraid to do even the smallest of work in your own office. So what I am saying is, yeah. So office you want to start, you start with the right place, with the right people at the right time, and uh, with whom you want to start, the size of the nature and the size of the organization. Yeah, I was sorry, I was telling about book writing. Now today, let's say you want to specialize in audit or tax. It will take some time. Even after five years, you may get work easily. But to sustain the monthly cash flow, see, you have to think like a businessman as an entrepreneur. To sustain the monthly cash flow, your rent and salary you have to pay. Plus you have your own personal sustenance, right? I have no qualms in admitting we started all our careers by doing accounting. And that is why our profession is beautiful. It gives us the maneuverability. Because you are building your long term expertise and advice, but your day to day bread butter is accounting. So why I am telling you this is, because I told you you build on one expertise. But at the same time, commercial reality is also there. You will not get 10 lakhs of work the first day as a tax practitioner. I am just speaking as a tax practitioner. Maybe if you want to do management consulting or audits, that may be the same thing for you. So you have to start maybe with one more activity which gives you regular monthly cash flow. I think that is very, very important. A monthly retailer accounting fees. For that, you have to, you yourself have to do accounting. We ourselves did accounting, me and my other partner. We ourselves bought the tally software, set up the ledgers, vendors. You know, typically how you start accounting. Each and every bill we started. Then of course we started hiring people, in one year at least the ground level people were set, you know. They are very very important, sometimes some people do everything, you are doing accounting, you are doing audit, why do you audit, you are advising income tax, uh, you are advising on GST, you are advising on company law, I think those days are gone, I mean those were the traditional areas of practice, those were the typical traditional ways of functioning. Uh, I think in an era of specialization, you have to have one core activity. I sincerely and humbly acknowledge the presence of uh, Shri Madhukar Hiranange in the auditorium. And his entry is at the most 
correct time. When I say pick up one area of specialization, this gentleman has been specializing into indirect taxes. How much I know from the last 30 years, right from day one, how much I have interacted with him. And he has not done anything apart from indirect taxes. So his interest in indirect taxes way back in 1986 87 is the same as till today morning. And he's one of the most well known IDT professionals all over India, not only in South or Bangalore. I have heard about him all over India. So that is the passion we should have. Today, Madhukar sir has done IDT. He's a mentor for me, he's an inspiration for me. Undying passion in 1988 till 2018. That very few people have today. Let me tell you how much I'm seeing around and nothing against this generation. But yeah, we all, because the atmosphere outside the industry, you know, quick money, you get immediately 8 to 10 lakh salary, 5 lakhs or 6 lakh salary. I'm not saying commerce is wrong at all. But yeah, we tend to get lured. We get attracted, okay, boss, I'm 6 lakhs, I get to party, wear good clothes. By the time I'm 30, I'll have a good car, I'll pay EMI for my house. Fine, that's your choice then. Right? So it is very, very attractive, not, to, it is very easy not to get into practice and get into a job. And which is why I am saying the statistics is 70, 80, 90 percent of the people who, who qualify, they get into an MNC job nowadays. But practice has its own channel, there is no doubt about it. Because nothing like you giving an opinion and client just raising your work. I mean that is the biggest satisfaction what you can get. And the entrepreneurial, the businessman thinking you will develop. Which you may or may not develop, let's say if you are working in an industry, there also you may develop. I don't mean to undermine industry also, you see. I am saying having chosen practice, it has its own pros and cons. The road is long, but let me tell you that is a very very sturdy road. You are on your own, you are your own boss, you are not answerable to anybody. I think that is the biggest, biggest intangible asset which you have. You may earn a bit less money. By the time you are 10 years, you may earn only maybe let's say 25 lakhs compared to a job of 50 lakhs. I am just giving an example, please don't quote me anywhere these numbers. Okay, but always look at the long term picture. But yeah, today we are in a scenario compared to maybe earlier where we can make some very very good intelligent planning before we start our own practice. See, that is very very important. Have a good office, good staff, keep your staff happy. Most important thing, more than the clients, it is your staff. If you, Richard Branson has said, if you keep your team happy, they will automatically keep your clients happy. We are in a people's business. For us, the stock in trade, the plant in machinery is the team who works with you, right from article tailor, qualified chartered accountant. If you have good people, when we go for client meetings today, even as a MNC firm, first thing the CFO will ask me, how big is your team? All your brand, big four, big five, big ten brand is good. All my own brand when I made in my own practice was good. He said, finally, my team should be comfortable with your team. Let me tell you, if you want to grow, if you want to make it big, you have to have a big team. You have to have a reasonable team. I mean, unless you want to have a two, three member team which if you want to practice in the young age, it may not be feasible. I mean, the people who want to practice or chamber practice is different, you know, they have a different mindset, maybe once you are more heading towards retirement that time. But when we are young and energetic, 25, 35, we want, we want growth, right? At the same time, let us not all, immediately dream about 100 people growth. You want to do tax, you want to do audit, plan for, okay, in the next five years, I will be a 20 member organization. But each of those 20 people should be like gems. Right from article till the practicing charter, till the chartered accountant in your team. So team is extremely, extremely important. Today, even the biggest of the companies are selecting their office space, the type of infrastructure, keeping in mind the convenience of the people who will commute daily. And that is a cold fact of life, especially in cities like Bangalore. Where infrastructure is a challenge. There, there may be other cities also. So very, very important. Extremely, extremely important. To have a good team, invest in them. Pay good money to them. Even to articles, Depending on your you know, commercial situation, pay good to them because I am telling you all this I am telling you from my own experience. The articles in my office, some of them, they were so good at their work. They were working almost like qualifieds. I used to sit and review audits and accounts and tax opinions directly with them. They were so good. Right? So we are in a people's business. Number one is people. And if my 20 years of profession, if the biggest achievement, not the amount of clients I have served, not the quality of tax advice, it is the relationships I have made in my office with the team who works for me day in and day out. I think I have met some beautiful people in my profession, within my office and outside my office, within the city, within the institute, people like Madhukar Sadhagal. I mean it is only the relationship, it is only the people that count in your life. Let me tell you, if you maintain good relation with your team, with your professional circle, you will get the best of the clients in the world. And obviously, it has to be backed by good quality of tax advice or audit work or consulting work. So team is very, very important. 
invest in people, do regular training with them, make them feel important, a part of the organization, celebrate birthdays, take them out once in a while, play games, have ethnic day, have Christmas parties, Diwali parties, everything. We've all done all this. All of this we have done. Ethics and values. That is the most important thing. Today I've seen a lot of my friends and peers. To get, a, to get good clients, we'll coach, this, that. Everybody has their own way to do business. I think it is very, very important. You may get good success first five years. You start coaching clients from people, this, that. So we, we, at least we never did that. There are people who have a different mindset. If, if let's say, if I'm doing work for a client who's come through a referral, let's say from a big four, or let's say Madhukar sir has referred me some client. If that same client is asking me some other work, I will first call Madhukar sir and ask him, sir, you gave me this client. Can I take up this work? I think that you owe it to yourself. And that is your integrity. To today with Madhukar sir, tomorrow it could be anybody else. So I think integrity, ethics and values is the strong foundation on which you build your practice. Let me tell you, there is something very intangible. People very, very easily, they get carried away by money, glamour. But there is something intangible in the universe. What goes around will come around. The ecosystem in which you operate, no? You have to be good to your clients. You have to be good to your employees. You have to be good even to your vendors. Your vendors also should learn from you. The ecosystem in which you operate, let me tell you, they should be happy. If you cheat somebody in business or if you make your profit at somebody else's loss, you will take only escorts and bad wishes. And let me tell you, it will come back to bite you, if not now, after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You may be initially very, very successful. But there is a thing called ecosystem. The ecosystem in which you operate. Never cheat that ecosystem. Let me tell you, it will come and bite you so badly. And that is intangible. It cannot be seen. But there is a very positive vibe when you send out when you interact with your customers and vendors and employees outside. So very, very important. So ethics, values. If you have screwed up, if you have made a mistake, either to clients or employees, just own up. Say sorry. There is only once in 13 years I was delaying in payment of salaries to my people by two or three days. Some weekend was there, some, some issue was there. Internet problem. I went outside my cabin and apologized to my team and told them the reasons why the salary was delayed for two days. That is much I owe to my people. Similar experiences I have had in clients also. One of my clients, for some reason they wanted a PF registration. They went through consultants after consultants they could not get. We were doing accounting. We said we will hire, we will give you a consultant whom we work with. They got the PF within 15 days. They were happy. And you know what? When they got the PF, they told their employees, sorry. This guy who is the director of accounting from abroad, he had come. He said, I am sorry I did not give you a PF. Because it was compulsory that time after 20 people. So never, never take your people for granted or the ecosystem in which, which you be nice and fair to everybody. Yet yeah, be shrewd and smart. People mistake shrewd with manipulativeness. No, you can be shrewd to protect your interest without stamping on other people's feet. See, that is very, very important. Now that fine sense of judgment and balance is very, very difficult to achieve. It all depends on your background, your own value system. See, your value system is very, very important. Because how you are, you will project it in front of clients, in front of people. If you speak loosely about your own other professional colleague who is your competitor, you know, people will realize, you know, that you are jealous of him. Whereas in a client meeting you go, yeah, I know, XYZ is very good. Your client will respect you, let me tell you that. Just to win that one assignment, don't put somebody else down. Don't make a comment whether he is bad or something. If he is bad, the law will take care of him. Extremely, extremely important. The other thing is, don't do a lot of side businesses. Some friends of mine are able to open on HR, you know, I think there is a lot of money. You know, see all this. This whole economy which, uh, you know, we have been to get carried away. You know, the, the, the IT companies in Bangalore, there is a lot of business in HR. So one friend of mine, I don't again blame him. Maybe, see, he was from an engineering background. He was working in some company and he said that there is a lot of scope in this. So why don't you do it? I said, no boss, fine. Uh, insurance, mutual funds or, or anything. My own relatives told me, okay, there is a deal happening. Why don't you look into it? I said, no boss. If I want to buy a property, I'll buy it for my own purpose. I don't want to do brokerage of a property or HR because I don't want to be seen as a everything. Yeah? If I'm a consultant, I'm just a tax consultant to the world. I'm very, very clear. Then morning, evening, I will breathe, eat, sleep, dream only tax. Maybe there is one property deal which I may get money. I don't know, but uh, maybe it, it involves going 10 times and I want a brokerage. I didn't go into that. I'm telling you with my own experiences. I didn't want to be seen to the larger world outside as doing everything or have an HR desk in my office. No, I am not. I am a practicing CEO, I am a practicing CEO. In that year, you do accounting, auditing, tax, that is your thing. But there are people who do multidisciplinary business. I knew people who were working in a job, they used to do side business, payroll, 
200 people class of MNC. I mean, that is not good. Don't try to do too many things. Don't try to be extra smart also in life. It is not good. It will really backfire in your face. Very important. Another thing is opening of branches. So that is more from a growth practice. Start small, slow, steady. See, gone are those days. Okay, when we have the senior members, now they are able to open branches all over India. Today, the attrition in accounting industry, now we have a very, very modern thing. Attrition is very high. After IT, I think the maximum attrition today is in the accounting industry. Because people have a lot of opportunities. I faced a lot of attrition in 13 years. In fact, the year in which I was my firm, I had an attrition of almost 50 to 60 percent. Right? So think twice before having a very, very big team, have a niche service, niche target market area, opening of branches. We had clients who moved from Bangalore to Bombay, they were calling us. We had to recruit a person from here, take him, plant him there. They said, oh, open an office. Hey, Baba, who will go and sit there? Two partners are here, there is no partner there. If I recruit somebody in Mumbai, oh, if he leaves, I have to catch the next flight and go. See, today it is not practical immediately to open a branch unless you have some three, four apart from you, three, four good trusted senior managers or partners within your own organization. Then you tell one of them, okay, you go to Chennai or Hyderabad or Mumbai or go and develop the practice. That is only a growth phase. I will not spend much time. Probably Madhukar sir is better positioned to deal with that. So first of all, we don't say, okay, boss, I open all the four branches, no, this, that. Take slow step at a time. You may have one client in Chennai, Hyderabad. You figure out what best way you can service him. Can you tie with another local CEO or an expert? Do that. See for some time. Don't go the first one open an office. Why? Because the up and down will tire you mentally. The attrition of the branch people will tire you mentally. I know very well established firms, they have not bothered to open branches. <coughs> and there are very well established firms who have branches all over India. See, you may be of the same caliber, but some things work for some people, some things don't work for some people. You have to accept it. Extremely, extremely important. We were very clear we don't want to open a branch office because we were only two partners, 20 people here. We were very, very hands on operationally in our day to day work itself. So who will go and set and open a branch and uh, do up and down every day, five days? Ah, unless you are 30, 40 years old in the practice, it's a different thing. So again, that is the reality of today. Today, if you are having CA firms in the branch, those CA firms are 30, 30 years old. After that, they have started opening the branches. Not immediately in the first few years. Unless you start itself at a very, very big level. Madam, how much time? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? I told you one of the basic founding principles of your practice, ethics and values. Apart from that, only one thing should drive you, you should be mad and crazy after is quality. Either the quality of your audit or tax or consulting, whatever. It is only quality that should drive you day to day. So there should be enough knowledge ecosystem within your office. You should have trainings, emphasis on quality. I have known my friends, some people, if they want to give a capital gain tax, he will ask another chartered accountant. I mean, that is a bizarre way of advising your clients. You have to read. If you are an auditor, you have to know in and out of accounting and audit standards and companies act or whatever. If you are a tax professional, every day you have to read. I know senior chartered accountants and advocate every morning 5, 5.30 who are high court practicing lawyers. Every morning 5, 5.30 they get up and read law two hours. It is like a vias. The best of the musicians and the senior most singers do it. It is your yes. You have to be crazy about reading. If you are not the type who reads, this profession is not for you. Let me tell you, please go to industry. You should read because if you are in practice, you should be technically very, very strong. And who is a technically strong person? Today when we think about Australia cricket team or South Africa cricket team, immediately, whatever, whether they win World Cup or not, immediately which one thing which comes to us is, was they are a quality cricket team. There is that fear factor. For Indian teams, sometimes it is there, sometimes it is not there, unfortunately. <coughs> because quality team may not be that consistent. So quality is very, very important. All those things in your office, be it software, be it infrastructure, be it people, be it your own, your own self, it is quality because see, tomorrow when you are a partner in your firm, your, all the people in your firm will look up to you for quality advice. Apart from your clients. That time if you are wrong family, you will lose respect within the office and obviously outside in the market. So always stress on quality. Whatever work you do, done by somebody, checked by somebody, that make or checker, you know, done by somebody, reviewed by somebody else. Extremely, extremely important. 
Be very, very careful. Be very, very sensitive about deadlines. If you have committed a client today at 12 o'clock, make sure that opinion goes today. If not, call up the client and apologize. I was supposed to send it. These are the results. Please give me your day over. There are people, and many of these small, small things, people take it for granted. Why client opinion? If you are going for a client meeting, if you are late, the client is expected to call them up and tell you. In India and over abroad. Abroad specifically, even if you are 4 or 5 minutes late, that guy, his face is so angry, he almost immediately expects you to tell sorry. So don't take anybody's time for granted. Your customers, your own people's time, it is not good. Think about how you can do networking and tie-ups, informal tie-ups. So let's say you are doing accounting, in that some company law work comes, you don't have expertise in company law, tie up with the company secretary, who's good in the market, who's reasonable to charge, who's good to work with. You know, so have informal tie-ups. There are a lot of these things nowadays available. Unfortunately, those things may not have been available 30 years back. Right? So informal tie-ups. Then formal tie-ups, our institute has some networking regulations within India, outside India. Explore that for further growing. So today, if you don't have your own office, tie up the people who have office. And then you see how you can serve your clients in other geographies, either within India or outside India. That is a smarter way of doing, rather than you planting a tree everywhere, initially itself. I have already said journalists versus specialists, celebrate birthdays, farewells, drafting skills, good audit report drafting, internal audit report, tax audit report, tax opinions, submissions. It is not easy, tax opinions. One is the tax opinion, one is the submission. As tax opinion, let's say, let's say I'm doing even a GST opinion, the language is different. It has legal, but it is not dense legal. But the moment I'm doing a representation to the authorities, it is dense legal language. Let me tell you, it is backbreaking. In June 2013, I was a partner in my own firm. Eight, there was some, so many, seven, eight appeals lined up. I had not drafted, we had filed the appeals due to lack of time. Morning, 8 and 30, I used to go, I used to draft the appeals myself. Let me tell you, drafting of opinions and appeals is a backbreaking job. If you are a tax profession, be it TT or IVD or transfer pricing, how will you draft? It is very, very important. You should have checklists, audit programs, everything to do the work systematically. Drafting of opinion and the guys in your office, obviously they will look to you. So you should have those capabilities. I didn't have, I developed it over a period of time. My other partner helped me. There are people like Madhukar sir, Venkat sir, they have developed it over a period of time. If you work in a job in an industry or a CA, MNC firm or a large CA firm outside, those are the skills you will get. Which is why I said, experience is very, very important. How to treat a particular provision, not to take a very aggressive step, not to take a very uh, uh, a conservative step. That fine sense of judgment you get it only over a period of time. That is the tax position what you take for your client. But the, the, the quality, even my email should be very, very well drafted. Let me tell you, we've written clients in my own practice to clients in UK. They have corrected our drafting mistakes and sent it back. Because today it's all about smartphones, emails, right? You give, you send your image as a professional. If it is a shoddily drafted opinion or an email, you will not create a good impression. So extremely, extremely important to have good vocabulary, good knowledge of the subject. And drafting is something which it is over its own appetite. Madhukar sir may draft one opinion in a different way. I may look at it in a totally different way. Vendor sir may be doing it in a very, very different way. Finally, you should be able to convey that message to the clients, the advice. A good blend of practical and legal. I mean, for drafting formats, we can have another session. But this, these are the prerequisites when you start your office, an audit opinion or an internal audit report. The tone and tenor and the flow of the opinion and the audit report, it should be very, very step-by-step -step logical. You need not use very, very big jargons as long as you convey the message. Because you please understand your internal audit report, your tax report, your tax opinion will be circulated to the investors, to the board, to other big four firms, to other large firms. It will convey to what you are. I can share with you the transfer pricing work what my other partner used to do. We got a call from BDO London to do their transfer pricing pricing reports to do the back-end work here in Bangalore. Because for one of our clients, he read our TP report. And for that client, he was the global TP advisor. It so happened due to something the commercials didn't work out and we did not, we could not go ahead with that assignment. But because of our drafting skills, we got a call from the video senior partner from London. I'm sharing with you something from my own experience. Extremely, extremely important. Standard font and type. I'll just wind up a couple of minutes. 
So we had Times New Roman 11 when I was in my own practice. T and R 11. Times New Roman is the Times New Roman is the font type, and size of the font is 11. Those are good business reader friendly fonts. I'm telling you the details. Maybe we are not used to, but these are some of the things. And your quality will itself speak. The entire universe will gather and praise you. If these small small things you take care of in your practice, this is more of operational issues, you know. One is strategically how you make a decision, right? And with what kind of people you want to partner, what kind of work you want to do, what is the target market you want to address. Having decided all that, finally, the proof of pudding lies in the eating. Let me tell you, people talk big in the cabins. Finally, my always bigger challenge has been how to execute work. By God's grace, we were fortunate to get a lot of work. Execution, yeah, at times we were stretched. Because we are living in an era, unlike maybe in the 70s, 80s, there is a lot of attrition in the accounting field. So please start your practice with your eyes open. Have limited team, limited number of services. Gradually as and when you grow, you can expand your price. So thanks a lot for a very patient hearing and I am happy to take some questions.
as he mentioned, when he started his practice, the initial days, he even cleaned his office, his staff table too. That is what my experience also. I qualified in 92 and uh, I was uh, working abroad and came back in 98 and started my practice as a proprietor. Had only one stop in the morning, sometimes he absent, no beer, nothing. I used to go to office early morning, 7 o'clock with a tiffin carrier and clean, open the office, clean the office, start my practice and come back home, read everything in the office initially, no clients only reading. So, come back 8 or 9 o'clock. So, it was the practice I started during 1998. And fortunately, today we are with the 7 partners and our branch in Udupi uh, too. We have originally big size of our employees and articles in our practice. I am happy that we have reasonably grown well in this market. There is uh, my experience too. I think uh, the same thing uh, Madhu had said. They have grown much bigger than us. Uh, really, we are proud of you, Madhu. So with that, uh, we thank you for this uh, precious time and valuable knowledge shared with us. Thank you very much. Madhu. As a token of appreciation and gratitude, uh, may I request our SAS member, Madam Geeta, to come forward and present a moment of the model. Thank you, Mr. Alpha. Thank you, Madam Geeta.